Hi guys, um, today we're doing a optimization question where we have a right circular cone that's machined from a solid sphere, radius 30 centimeters. We have to find the ratio of the volume of the cone to the volume of the sphere when the volume of the cone is at a maximum. Okay, so let's write down the data that we know. So it tells us that the sphere has a radius of 30 centimeters. So let's just write that down. So in this case, we've got this big R denotes the radius. So we've got R equals 30 centimeters. Great. So we're also we're asked to find the volume of a cone. So the volume of a cone, for those of you who don't know, volume of a cone is equal to 1 over 3 pi r squared h. Cool. So, what we've got here is this r squared that the formula takes into consideration is this r squared or ab, not cb. So, we've got ab and we've got h, which is this direction. Now, although cb is the radius of this sphere. This is also the radius of the sphere. So we can write 30 in here as well. And let's call this little side here A of that triangle. So what we have to do is we have to get the volume of the, of the cone in terms of one variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the relationship between the radius and the other two sides of this triangle to get everything in this function in terms of height. So, to start with, we know that height of this cone is going to be equal to the radius of the circle, with the sphere, sorry, which is 30, plus A. We also know that we can work out like a squared, or we could work out R squared by finding using Pythagoras. So we can go R squared, or this side of the triangle, is equal to the big R, which is CB, which is the radius of the sphere, which is equal to 30 squared, subtract A squared. Now, let's make this function here in terms of a, or sorry, h, a in terms of h, sorry. So we're going to have a is equal to h take 30. And then we're going to substitute this in for a in this formula. So what we've been given is we're going to have r squared is equal to 30 squared, which is 900, minus a squared, which is h take 30 squared. So what we're left with is we're left with 900 minus, keep this bracket, h squared take 60h plus 900. And hopefully you're aware that we've got 900 minus 900, the 900s cancel, and we're left with, let's put it up here, r squared being equal to negative h squared plus 60h. Cool. So, What's important about deriving this relationship between the height and the radius of the cone is we can then substitute this R squared into our volume of a cone equation. So we have the volume of a cone is equal to one third pi now, instead of writing r squared, we're going to write this relationship because we can see that r squared is equal to that, negative h 
squared plus 60h, and then we're going to times that by h. So this ends up looking like this. We can multiply the brackets out from both directions. So we're going to have negative pi h cubed over 3 plus 60 divided by 3 is 20 h squared. So it's going to be plus 20 pi h squared. Cool. So you can see now with the volume of the cone, we've got the volume of the cone in terms of one variable. So now we can do a straight single variable differentiation. So we're going to calculate the de the derivative of the volume with respect to height. And hopefully you guys are aware of the mechanics of differentiation. I'm going to get this 3, I'm going to multiply it by the front and you'll notice that the fraction will then cancel. So we're going to be just left with negative pi h squared. Then we're going to take this 2, multiply it by 20 and we'll plusing 40 pi h. So, and because the maximum volume of the cone will occur when the derivative is equal to zero. So we're going to set this equal to zero. So from here on, the problem becomes more of an algebra-based question than a calculus-based question. So we're going to, I'm going to move the pi h, negative pi h squared to the other side of the equal sign, and I'm going to get 40 pi h is equal to pi h squared. I'm then going to divide both sides by pi h. And you're going to notice that on this side, the two pi h's cancel out. On this side, the pi's cancel and one of the h's cancel out. So we're left with 40 equals h. Cool. So what I think it's good to know now is we're going to work out what the radius is, what little r is. Let's work out all the different variables. So the radius of the cone or the base radius of the cone, we're going to use this formula, r squared is equal to negative h squared plus 60h. So r squared is equal to, we know that negative h squared, well h is 40, 40 squared is 1600, it's going to be negative 1600 plus 6 fours are 24 plus 2 zeros. And that's r squared equals that. So r squared is equal to 800. So r is going to be equal to the square root of 800 or 20 square root 2. That's the simplified version. Cool. So now what we can do is we can find the ratio of the volume of the cone to the volume of the sphere. So let's just change quickly change color. So we're looking for the volume of the cone and the volume over the volume of the sphere. So that's going to be equal to one third pi r squared h divided by 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So before we start inputting any numbers, let's simplify this for ourselves. The pi's are going to cancel. The 
R squared on the top is going to cancel. One of these is going to cancel. So we can see here that when we have the volume of the cone divided by the volume of the sphere, what's remaining is we have H at the top divided by 4 times the radius at the bottom. So this is going to be equal to the height, which we calculated to be 40, divided by 4 times the radius, which is 20 square root 2. So let's simplify this a little bit. We're going to have 80, 40 over 80 is 1 over 2. one over two square root two and as they because they asked for a ratio you could say the volume of the cone as a ratio of the volume of the sphere is going to be equal to one is to two square root two as you can see, the, um, the problem is mainly algebra, with there being a small fraction of differentiation in here, but mainly it's algebra. So I hope it helped again, and I'll see you next time.